All right. I don't even know what all of these uh, things are for. So here we have the four pin programming cable. Uh, my bad guys, I'm literally figuring this out in real time. All right guys, so I got the wiring diagram figured out. So this connector right here plugs into this longer one. As you, I don't know if you guys could see that. But yeah, these plug in together. And then this big brown connector plugs into the fuel sensor itself. Now, you do not need to use the white wire or the brown wire whatsoever. White wire is for dimming, brown wire is for fuel temp. I don't need either of those. So yeah, we can go ahead and start feeding these wires through with my gauge cluster and start wiring it up. Okay, so if I remember, I can just pop this up right here. Oh, yeah, that's where I got my wires. Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, okay, that's how I did it. Hopefully that sticks again. Oh, I might have to cut this up, damn it. Bought this thing off of Amazon a few weeks back. Best investment ever. Oh shit. Right, I had to set you guys on the dash because I gotta like stick my head right here. I did a little bit of trimming. Not the prettiest, but it's okay because this cluster is gonna cover it up. So I'm gonna feed the wires through there. And under there, I had to cut a little bit of that out too, as you see. And then just basically stuff it all the way down and into the fuse box. Yeah, so this is where the wires are. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and wire them up really quick and then I will show you guys exactly where they go. I know it looks like a mess down here, but trust me, it's, it's really not. All you need to do is ground it with the black wire. I had to extend it as you can see here. Just ground the black, just stick the red, which is power, um, to a fuse. And I know that's not the way to do it, <laughs> like I know, but if you haven't noticed by now, I always tend to just jerry-rig stuff. Um, and that's pretty much it, just for power of the gauge. And so that leaves us with the yellow wire, and I'll get to that right now. This yellow wire, you're going to extend a couple feet because you have to tap into this radiator sensor. Uh, it's called the ECT2 and it's this sensor right here, right here. So literally right next to the big um, coolant pipe here, you're gonna tap into the green wire. See if I could disconnect it right now. There you go. So you're gonna tap into the green wire. So this is where I'm gonna run the, the wires through. Uh, this grommet hole right there, I already took out the grommet. There it is. But yeah, just take down half your fender liner and it's literally the first one you see there. Just pop the grommet out and then you can feed the wires through and up into the fender, however you want to do it. But yeah, that's where that yellow wire goes. I got it spliced and extended. I ran it through the grommet right there. I'm gonna zip tie it behind here so it's a little bit safer. Ran it through there. And here it is. I wish this camera would focus up more when you're getting close, but it's always like wide angle. This is the standard angle, but there it is. Spliced around and I'm just gonna put some tape around it. It'll be fine. And that's pretty much it for the wiring. <laughs> now that the yellow wire is wired up, the next step we could do, feed this wire through the hole. Um, this big brown connector is what's gonna be going in the engine bay because this connects to the actu actual fuel sensor itself. Just feed it all the way down there. All right, so pretty much like this. This is the one I just fed in from outside. And this one is the one from the gauge and you just connect it. Boom, and that's it. All right, so this is pretty much how I ran it. 
behind the strut and in through there. I don't like how loose this one is, although that seems pretty tight back there, but I um, guess we'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully the tire clears it, but I'm sure it will. This last step would be to make the fuel line. So it's this line right here that we're gonna be replacing. On the right side where it goes to a 90, and if you just follow it, it's this one right here. All the way to right here, right into the fuel rail. So that's the one we're gonna be replacing. Basically take it out, make the AN line, and that's it. All right, I'm about to take off that fuel line. Take out your gas cap to release the pressure. All right, I had to run inside and grab some napkins real quick because as soon as you unplug this fuel line, it starts dripping. Oh, come on. Ah, oh, really? There you go. Mmm. I love the smell of gas. Oops. Here's the diagram that I drew up uh, for the, the line that I'm making right now. Hopefully this will make it a little bit easier. Everything I'm using will be in the description. So uh, starting with the K motor uh, quarter inch uh, fitting. There it is right there. Um, and then we move down to where the fuel sensor is going to be. It's going to be 3 8 connectors on both sides. I still have to cut it, but it's basically going to go right here. Um, and then it goes into the fuel rail, which is a 5 16 size, and it's going to go right here. So I'm just going to go there. Basically where my thumb is is I'm going to cut. I wonder if I could use these heavy duty wire cutters. insulated not for steel or ASCR I don't know what ASCR is but I hope it's enough to cut because I really don't want to whip out the grinder hell yeah oh I'm so glad I bought this what a freaking lifesaver perfect cut too all right just squeeze this as far as you can get Okay, I'm actually going to start from the quarter inch one. Uh, this one's at the way back toward the back of the um, engine. Um, so I'm actually going to start threading on this K motor and start from there and work my way toward the fuel rail. So that would be this one right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, hope you guys can. Now we'll go on there. Boom. And then you put this uh, purple piece on. Right there. And then you try not to drop it. When you drop this thing, you're doomed. Good luck finding it. Phillips. Okay, so this is where the 90 is going to go. Thread it on there just like that. As you see, I already ran uh, my, K or my A in line through, but that's pretty much how I'm running it. Right there. And straight into there. Alright, we could actually put the uh, 5 16 fitting on here. There you go. So hopefully that stays. On the actual A in line, I have a 45 degree right there, as you guys will see in a minute. 
Okay, so here it is kind of mocked up. There's the 45, and then here is the flex fuel sensor. Um, it's not all the way in the line yet, as you guys can see, um, but I'm kind of just mocking up where exactly I want it, but I'm pretty sure that's where it's gonna go, kind of standing up just like that. And then if you follow the line, here's the 90. And yeah, so that's pretty much the setup right there. Um, I'm not going to cut into the line yet until I have the uh, the 3 8 fittings for the sensor. So, until then, I'll see you guys in the next clip. Alright guys, those 3 8 fittings finally came in. I just put them on the flex fuel sensor. And this is how they look. All I got to do is cut into the line, thread them on, and we're good to go. So that's pretty much it installed. There's the uh, fuel sensor. And then everything is working fine. As of right now, like this specific clip, I'm recording this like three months, four months after everything else you just watched. Like, car looks kind of different. I got new headlights, new wheels. But yeah, man, I don't know. Life's been a movie lately. It's been, this month in June specifically has been really crazy. The real ones stick around. Um, I won't put this whole car thing behind me completely, but it will be put on the shelf for quite some time. Uh, but yeah. I'll leave you guys with this. Uh, maybe I got another video after because um, I feel like I haven't done enough POV videos with this car and there aren't a lot out there. So maybe that'll be like the last two that I do for a while. But yeah, hope you guys like it. Subscribe. Stick around, I guess, for the future.